Now, rather than rigorously constructing the real numbers, we're just going to assume that the real line exists. Along with the function's addition, the plus sign, it takes r cross r, an ordered pair, two numbers, and maps it into a single number. And we know what it happens. You take the two numbers, you add them, and you get this, this number. This dot, which you could refer to as the times symbol, takes two real numbers, it multiplies them together, and it produces another real number. And the relation, this is a less than. The less than symbol. Where, for all three numbers in the real numbers, x, y, and z, the following axioms hold true. Almost all of these, I'm sure, will be very familiar to you. The first one says that x plus y plus z, where you do the x plus y first, is the same as x plus y plus z. This is the one where you're doing the grouping. The numbers stay in the same order. The grouping is different. That's the associative property of addition. And likewise, there's an associated property of multiplication that looks like this. And notice I sometimes frequently leave out the dot between the two terms I'm multiplying. If I just put them adjacent to each other, there's an implied dot. It's multiplication. Second one, x plus y is equal to y plus x. That's a commutative property of addition. There's a similar one for multiplication. It doesn't matter which order you multiply or add. Number three, x times the quantity y plus z is xy plus xz. We know that as the distributive property. There exists a zero, element zero in the real line, in the real line or the real number, such that zero plus x equals x for all x's. For all x in the real line or in the real numbers, there's also a corresponding y such that when you add those two terms together, you get zero. And we refer to that number for y, the negative x, the opposite of x. You add them together, you get zero. That means they're there. This is the additive identity of the other. Each number has an additive identity. There's also a number one in the real numbers, such that one times x is equal to x for all x in the real numbers, and one is a different number from zero. Uh, that's the multiplicative identity. For every x in the set of real numbers, except for zero, this is the set of all real numbers take away the number zero, so for all positive and negative real numbers, x, there is a corresponding y in the real numbers such that when you multiply them together, you get one. That's considered, that's called the multiplicative inverse. You can think of it as the reciprocal of that number. Zero is the only number that doesn't have a reciprocal. And we write it as y equals 1 over x, which using exponents, we could write it like this. If x is less than y, um, let me see. Oh, yeah. If x is less than y, that implies that x plus z is less than y plus z. If you add the same thing to both sides of an inequality, the inequality stays the same x less than y and y less than z implies that x is less than z. That would be like the transitive property of inequality or transitive property of less than. Number 10, exactly one of these is true. x is less than y or x equals y or y is less than x. And you know what that means. We can also write this as x greater than y. Number 11, x less than y and z a positive number means that if I multiply both sides of the inequality by that positive number, the inequality does not change. So z greater than zero, we get x, x z or z x is also less than z y. <clears throat> now, numbers one through seven, those seven axioms are the field axioms. They define what it is to be a field. If we add on 
8 through 11, maybe I'll just say axioms 1 through 11, all of them define an ordered field. ordered field, and I'm going to write it as the triple, or actually the quadruple, like that. This is the set, these are the two operations we defined, and that's the inequality. The inequality is what defines the order. 